and documented a worker's fight by the award-winning author and illustrator Duncan Tanatia. You don't know our names, but you've seen us. In this country, we build homes, we harvest crops, we cook, we clean, and we raise children. Some people want to kick us out, and some act like we don't exist, but we are here, compañeros. We may not have documents, but we all have a story and we all have a name. This is my story. I am Juan. I was born in a small village in Mexico. We don't speak Spanish there. We speak our own language, Mixteco. I started working in the fields when I was very young. My father passed away when I was a niño. I had to work to help out my mom, brothers, and sisters. I crossed the border before I turned 18. My tío, who lived in the U.S., paid for the coyote to show me the way. He paid him a lot of money, you know? The migras caught me that first time I tried to cross. They beat me with their palos, hard. But I tried again the next day. I ran past the border fence with the coyote. I called my tío. A guy picked me up and drove me to a strange city. I moved in with my tío and tres primos. They lived in a poor neighborhood where los polis sometimes harass you for no reason. We called our apartment the bachelor's pad, man. I started working in a restaurant where one of my primos worked. When the boss hired me, he said he was doing me a favor because I had no papers. I was just happy to have a job. I met my wife at the restaurant. She used to work there making spring rolls, taquitos, you know? She helped me learn Spanish and some English, too. I worked there for years, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, for very little pay. But one day, a Chinese waitress, Lee, got hired. Soon after she started, she told me she wanted to go have the happy hour with me. What did she want me to do with her? She knew I was a married man, but she kept asking, and one night I went out with her. What do you want from me? I'm married. Why do you always ask me to go out with you after work? I was surprised by what she said, man. Juan, it's not fair that they are paying us so little. They should at least be paying us the minimum wage. Do you know what that is? We work hard. We deserve to be paid right. We had a long conversation that night. The next day, I kept thinking about what Lee had said. The boss pays me $250 a week. That's about $3 an hour. He should pay me at least $5 plus tips. And there's a note. $5 plus tips is the minimum wage for tipped workers in New York in 2014. So that's where that number comes from. $5 plus tips was the minimum wage at this time in that place. I can't, oh, uh, so he should pay me at least $5 plus tips, but he steals them. He doesn't pay us overtime. I can't miss work even if I feel sick. How much is he taking from me every week, every year? And not just me, man. How many people work in the restaurant? The boss has a fancy car, expensive clothes. We can barely pay our rent. I kept thinking about it, but that night I received some news that gave me something more to think about. Juan, said my wife, I'm pregnant. I was very happy, but also scared. The next day I told Lee, there has to be something we can do. I've heard of a place where they can help us, she said. Later that week, we went to a workers' center. It was in a basement near Chinatown. People were there having a meeting. Some were Chinese, but others were Latinos. They all had different jobs, you know? Bag groceries, sew clothes in the garment district, work in a nail salon, cook in a restaurant. Some had papers and some didn't, but they all had problems at work. I listened to them and I learned a lot. If you want to improve the conditions at your job, you have to get your coworkers involved said one of the organizers at the center. In the days after the meeting, whenever things were slow at the restaurant, 
I asked other mishtecos who worked in the kitchen to go have a cigarette break with me. I didn't even smoke. We spoke in mishteco in case the boss overheard us. It's not fair that they're paying us so little here. We work hard, man. We deserve to be paid right. Do you know what the minimum wage is? It took months, but little by little, I convinced the other busboys, the dishwashers, and the cooks to come to the worker center with me. Lee convinced the other waiter, uh, waitresses and waiters to come too. We had many meetings at the center. A legal counselor there said that we could file a legal complaint against our boss. Many of us were scared because we were undocumented. What if our boss had us deported? When he hired me, the boss had said I was lucky he was giving me a job. He said the same thing to others. But I began to see that he was using the fact that I didn't have papers to take advantage of me. My coworkers and I talked it over a lot. We decided not to be scared. We all agreed to file the complaint. I was the first one to sign. The boss was so angry when he received the letter that said we had filed a legal complaint against him. He wanted to fire us all. But who would cook and wash the dishes? He needed us, and he knew he couldn't fire any of us because he would get in trouble now that we had taken action. In the following days, he figured out I was one of the leaders of our movement, and he cut my hours. I was barely making any money, man. My wife was really angry when she found out what happened. My Theo, too. He yelled at me, Idiota! What are you doing? You think this is a game? You are having a niño. How are you going to feed him if you are barely working? The legal counselor at the center told us to be patient. The lawsuit could drag on for months, even years. What could I do, compañero? How would I pay the rent? I wasn't sure. But I decided to use the extra time I had supporting La Lucha, the fight of other workers I had met at the center. Some mixtecos from the restaurant joined me when they could. We handed out flyers and joined a picket line of workers outside a restaurant in Chinatown. My tío and others thought I was crazy. What are you doing? Why are you joining them? You are Mexican. You are not Chinese. But I told them that doesn't matter. Mexican, Chinese, black, or white. What matters is that we face the same problems. Several weeks after we joined the piquete, a picture of us appeared in a newspaper. I showed it to the boss. He looked like a calavera, like he was dead inside. Do you want that outside of your restaurant? The boss realized I wasn't playing. He offered me thousands of dollars to drop the case. Cash! It was more billetes than I had ever seen. I would be able to buy the baby a crib and everything needed when he was born. We could even move back to Mexico and use the money to build a house in my village. I could see my mom. I had not seen her in years. But I said no. I wasn't fighting for only me. I was fighting for everyone in the restaurant. Eventually, the boss met with our legal counselor. Leah and I were there too, you know. We settled out of court. The boss agreed to pay years of stolen wages that he owed us all. We told him we would only drop the complaint if he let everyone keep their jobs. We wanted to keep working, but he had to pay us fairly. We also wanted to work reasonable hours. He said yes, and we shook hands. Some weeks later, he paid the first installment of what he owed us. My wife went into labor that same week. She delivered a beautiful baby girl. I couldn't be happier. We named her Esperanza, Hope. I started volunteering at the center. I shared my experience with others there. This last year, I tried helping some Mixteco delivery workers. They fought and won their case, but their boss hasn't paid them anything. He claims he is broke. We know it's a lie. He just moved his money into his relatives' bank accounts. Other workers I met at the center have won their luchas too, but the bosses just run or hide. 
That is why we planned this march, compañeros. We need laws that protect all workers. You may not know our names, but we are here. We work hard. We pay our bills. We pay taxes. Papers or no papers, we have our dignity and we deserve to be treated fairly. And at the end, there's an author's note from Duncan Tanatia that tells more about the situation of undocumented workers and what their work conditions are like and also different fights. So if you're interested, you're welcome to read that also.